If we reflect on what happened and what was said um, in Jakarta compared to today, green was risk. Green was risk to the financial community and it was unusual for a banker to actually attend such a, a gathering. Um, today, green finance is nearly mainstream. Today, green finance is, is according to the G20, um, and I was at the IMF World Bank meetings in, in, in Washington three or four weeks ago. It's a $10 trillion asset class. These things are all in train. So the $10 trillion asset class could be $20, $30 trillion. Um, so the money will be there. But the issue for all of those who are gathered in Marrakesh is how to actually bring that down to the local level. And that is the key question that you're going to address. First, I wanted to congratulate the Global Landscape Forum for bringing together thousands of world leaders, researchers, and members of civil society and the private sector to seek integrated solutions to the complex challenges of climate change. Climate change will reduce overall yields, leading to more hungry people around the world. In Africa, the combined effects of population growth and climate change will put even more people at risk of hunger. However, investments in agricultural research should not only focus on boosting yield, they should also work to increase nutrition, improve resilience to shocks, and mitigate climate change. Hello from the International Center for Tropical Agriculture, SEAT, uh, from beautiful Cali, Colombia. Uh, we are very excited with the GLF Global Agenda. Uh, we've been a founding member of the platform and we thank Germany for the fantastic leadership on continued support to the agenda and even more now expanding the platform to really make it a global uh, big event uh, and action research for development connected to three challenges that we are really all, we all facing, all, all members of GLF are facing, which is landscape restoration, uh, climate change, and of course, uh, hung, hunger and poverty. Now, we, we see this expansion on the platform crucial because it will involve not only the public sector, but the private sector, and also it will align us much better to the targets that we are all committed to work on for the sustainable development goals. Australia is thinking about that in terms of what it does with things like the Great Barrier Reef, um, where the Australian government is committed, and I happen to be part of an innovative uh, financial uh, group that are looking at how we actually deal at the micro level with helping the farmers and the landholders um, uh, participate better in terms of restoration uh, and, and, and farming practices that help the reef. Uh, here at SEAT, globally, Africa, Asia and in Latin America, we, we just launched uh, a year ago a new program on land restoration. It's a global program based on our 40-year capacity on soils, fertility work. So we are really excited to connect to all of you and to contribute as much as we can to this new effort. If we will continue to provide evidence-based research, and we will continue to support the Global Landscape Forum with data, knowledge and research. We are indeed the first generation to be affected by climate change, but we are absolutely the last that can do something about it.